My name is Jack Grisham uh, from TS Well, author of American Demon. I was in The Joy Killer and blah, 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 blah. And I'm here at Amoeba and, and we're doing What's in My Bag today. Elvis Costello. This just happens to be the first 10 years of Elvis, Elvis Costello, but when I talk about cool concerts, this is one of them. When Elvis came here, he played Hollywood High, and everyone always goes, Hollywood High, he played Hollywood High, but he also played Millican High School, my high school. And it was Elvis Costello, Nick Lowe, and Mink DeVille. I mean, it was just so beautiful and killer, and it's when music was all changing. Five dollars, sat right in the orchestra pit, and just, and just dug it. Damned, Machine Gun Etiquette. This is one of the best fucking records ever made. I, I love these guys. And I was so honored, I was actually asked to be in the documentary of The Damned, and I loved it, and I loved them. Well, this kind of goes hand in hand with this, not that, this. Who's next? Machine Gun Etiquette is the punk rock version of Who's Next. So if you put these two together, these are the two best rock records ever made, ever, as far as I'm concerned, ever made, man. This record right here was the theme song to any trouble I ever got into. And uh, I wrote a book called An American Demon, which I give a shameless plug to. And there's a, a part in American Demon where I'm inside a church with an ax and I'm getting ready to chop up the pulpit and then Love song was playing in my head. So I used the lyrics, so I had to get a hold of Rat Scavies and say, hey Rat, do you mind if I use the song? You know, he's got, oh Jack, go ahead. He was stoked. And then he wrote me a blurb for the book, Prince. Come on, how can you not go with this? I love Prince and I Wanna Be Your Lover is the coolest song. It's just so fucking cool. You know, you put it on the car when you're going somewhere and it feels like something cool is gonna happen. And speaking of that, I guess we can roll to the spinners too. I just love the spinners. How can you not? One of my favorite lines in this is I think one of the best first lines of a song ever. It's this, this is our fork in the road. Love's last episode and there's nowhere to go. This to get my friends, it's funny, because I get these guys that were, you know, they're like, want to be tough guys, you know, and they get in the car because they're going to go out and, you know, drink and get hard or whatever, and I'd throw on the spinners on the, on the eight track or, you know, Barry White. I make these guys Barry <laughs> White, so, you know, and it's like, they can't stop me from playing it, you know, the Delphonics, the stylistics, it's like, hey, I don't care, you guys may be going out to see Black Flag, but on the way there, we're rolling stylistics, so you're just going to have to deal with it. Like, I like punk rock because I like the doing stuff, but whenever I go home or just want to sit, I just don't want to listen to that. It, it's just too hard and it's just too, like I got to mellow out sometimes, which doesn't happen a lot. So Chet Baker sings, one of my favorites. It's just cool old standards and I have a bunch of kids. I have five kids. And with my second kid down, um, my Georgia, when she was a baby, I just put on this record and would just sit and hold her and just dance to this, you know, and it, it's so smooth and, and so beautiful. I love it. You'll hear me say that I'm so lucky to be loving you. Sly Stone, <laughs> how can you go wrong with this? I was just talking about this the other day about whether people are inherently bad or inherently good. And there's a line that Sly says in family affair and he says one child is is somebody that just loves to learn and another child is someone that you just love to burn so both loved by their moms but it's like both come from the same family and one is this and one is that both kids are good the mom blood's thicker than the mud 
It's a family affair. The Velvet Underground. I grabbed a bunch, I'm sorry. Rock and roll is just one of my favorites. She stole the dance to that fast, fast music. You know her life is saved by rock and roll. Yes, rock and roll. It's kind of hand in hand a little bit with John Lennon's Whatever Gets You Through the Night. They both got the same kind of feel. Whatever gets you through your life. To me, it's like, what, what's it make you feel? You feel like you want to go do something, or you up. I, I get depressed sometimes, and I don't anymore, but I used to get really into it. Like, when you get depressed, you get really depressed. Like, go put on Superstar by Bologna Day. You know what I mean? Just go put on something that's just, ah, just really, just fucking break down. However, on the other side of breaking down, let's wipe that all away. This, rock and roll, what a fun song, and just so cool, and it's just like, hey, we're gonna go. But I'll show you something funny. This is a Jack Johnson record. I've never heard this. And I've never heard any of his songs, although my niece was friends with him, but I don't know anything about him whatsoever. However, there's a song on this record that's the same as one of my songs, the same title. So one day I come out to the mailbox and there's a check in the mail for four grand, right? And I'm like, oh, what's this? And it's, it's got this song title on it, okay? So I go, oh, that's bitchin', right? Four grand, just out of the blue, I'm stoked but then I get greedy. And I look and I say, who are all these other writers? I don't know these people. So I call the publishing company, I go, well, you're paying people that had nothing to do with a song. And they said, don't worry, Jack, we'll find it. We'll get into it. So then three months go by, I get another four grand check. It's like, now instead of getting eight grand, I'm out 20, as far as my mind says. So now I'm really yelling at the publishing people. So another three months goes by, another check comes, another four grand, right? And then the publishing people call me and they go, oh my God, Jack, we got to the bottom of it. You know, we found that check, do you still have it? Like, oh, I fucking spent it. And they go, they go, well, that's Jack Johnson's money. <laughs> so I owed the publishing company $12,000, you know, because, because of one of these fucking songs. I mean, I'm glad Jack's doing well. I mean, that's wonderful, but now they wanted me to pay the money back. So they're using my royalties to pay it back. And I think that episode happened I don't know, 16 years ago. <laughs> I think I'm still tan in the hole, or whatever, whatever it is. And then the last thing, the Beatles revolver. How wonderful. Make love all day long. Make love singing songs. This is one of my favorite records. I don't know what to say about how much I love it. A lot of these records are records that I put on when I'm going to make a record. Now. Nothing I've done sounds anything remotely like any of this stuff. Although I, you know, I have ripped off the damned a few times, but when I put on a great song, it makes me want to strive to write a great song. It's just the feeling of thinking, God, something this cool was created. And, and so that's why I like it. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. I can't sing, I'm not a good singer. So punk rock was the only way I was ever gonna be able to play music. Guys like me don't play in bands. You know, I never even thought about playing in a band. But then when punk rock started, it was all about just, hey, I'm full of angst, I got angst to go around, you know? And I'm big and loud and wear nice shoes. So hey, fuck, I'm great for a great, great as a singer. Be boss.